Hey guys, what's up, it's Iflin here, and today we're going to be talking about the focus system within Warframe. So, spoiler alert, if you haven't completed the second room quest yet, please don't watch this video because it is a major spoiler and you don't want to ruin probably the best quest in the game for yourself just by watching this video and learning a little bit more about the systems. If you don't really care that much about spoilers, um, I still recommend you don't watch this video because the second dream is probably like one of the best quests you're probably ever going to play in terms of video games because it just makes this really amazing atmosphere. And I just recommend you go play it. But if you really, 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 really don't care, then I mean, continue watching the video, but do so at your own risk and don't say that I didn't warn you. So um, the focus system is a system that you unlock after the second dream quest, and it has a lot to do with your operator, right? So your operator is basically your Tenno, this guy that controls the Warframs from the in in this chair. Um, and at the end of the quest, you got to choose a focus skill, or what I like to call a skill tree, or a focus skill tree, right? Because that's basically what they are. Now, the focus system gets a lot of flack by a lot of people within the community because it's not really that well thought out, and there's only really two or three um, focus skills that are really ever worth it, right? Um, a lot of them are very underwhelming and don't really serve that much of a purpose because... You have to actually invest a lot of time and a lot of farming into making them like half decent, right? That and, you know, the more you invest into them, the longer it takes to sort of charge in game. So I'll explain what I mean whenever we take a look at the generic skill tree, which is the one that I recommend you choosing after the second dream quest, right? Now, the reason that we choose the Zenerik skill tree after the second rune quest is because it gives you a 4 energy per second regen as an active passive, right? And what I mean by active passive is that you have to actually activate it and then it turns into a passive, right? So you don't just get it from the get-go, you have to activate it and then it's a passive for the rest of the match. So, um, as you guys can see, this is a very, very small skill tree. It is, in my opinion, very cool. It's like something unique to the game, something that the game never seen before whenever it was introduced, and it really blew me away. But, uh, you know, upon further inspection, you'll notice that a lot of these abilities in here are very, you know, lackluster, you know. Some of them will have, like, very negative effects. Like, Void Pulse has a 50% chance to increase speed by 20% for 5 seconds, but reduces shields by 75% for the player, which is kind of like, well, why would I do that? And then, you know, why would I do the exact same thing a second time, right? Because get the exact same thing a second time so it's like okay well why would i even bother investing into that if i'm just gonna have like no shields right so it's whatever man uh it is what it is but this is why you should care about it because the state that it's in now is actually very useful whenever it comes to farming things prior to the changes that it's going to get right so the focus system is going to be changed so as you can see whenever you back out of it and then go back into it you notice in the bottom left corner that it says that it's in beta right so there it is. It says, you know, it's in beta. And then you can see your daily focus cap down there at 100,000. That's how much focus you can earn in a day uh, by equipping a lens to your favorite Warframe or weapon and then getting kills with that said Warframe or weapon. That's how you earn your focus. So I recommend putting your focus lenses on things like Ember, Equinox, Saren, or just a weapon that you use a lot. And that's how you earn focus XP or just focus in general. So um, understanding the skill tree is something that, you know, might not uh, you might not catch on to straight away so you'll see up here at the top we actually have like a capacity right so if we go ahead and we turn on energy overflow that takes away like a decent amount of the capacity there so you can see that we go from 27 all the way down to 23 because we're turning on this ability and you know it takes up four capacity as you can see at the bottom right there so it's taking up four every time we activate it or it gives us back four anytime we turn it off and then so on and so forth whenever you, whenever you activate more. So this one takes up 7. So you're all the way down to 16 right there. And then you equip another one like Energy Surge. That takes another 4. And then if you were to equip another thing, there's another 4 there. So you actually have to use Focus to purchase more capacity or pull, which is up here. And you also have your base right here. So this at base, it takes 4 capacity. You're going to need 4 capacity. And um, this pool is increased with the focus that you earn and also increases in price every single time that you increase it as well. So, you know, it starts to get to like a diminishing returns part where, you know, not every single ability that you have equipped is going to necessarily benefit and it's not really worth that amount of endo. Also, whenever you equip an ability, pay attention to the cooldown of your focus charge here. So right now we're at 180. I activate energy overflow. We go to 225, right? So you're... You need to kind of like balance the abilities that you choose with the cooldown because like you could 
complete a large majority of the missions in game within the space of like two three minutes if you're a good warframe player right so just knowing what you're doing and things like that there obviously for things like survival defense that doesn't matter too much but you know um your your focus it, it's all about the passive really so you know it, it's it's it, it matters but it doesn't matter too much so you can also decrease the fat or the cooldown air with um your void pulse mastery here too so i believe every single tree has something along the lines of mastery which increases or decreases the cooldown sorry so you know Zenric is all about your four energy per second passive and this is basically as far as you go with uh the skill tree i myself i went ahead and i've unlocked a little bit more of the stuff just because I want to see what happens with the changes, how I'm going to get compensated for my investment in my focus. Um, you know, that's just something that I'm personally doing. So I want to see what it's like whenever they do change the system up again, uh, what it's going to be like whenever I have a full skill tree of focus completely completed, and then how I may or may not be compensated for that there come the time that they actually do change it. So that's just something I'm doing. But for those of you who don't have the time to do that, for those of you who really can't be asked to do that, just get... Your Void Pulse, get that there maxed out, get your Energy Overflow, get that maxed out, and get your Void Pulse Mastery, get that maxed out, and then don't touch anything else within the Xenoric Focus, right? So, you know, that's only one of the Focus Trees. Let's talk about some of the others as well over here. So, anytime you back out, I'll ask you to commit the Focus Changes or whatever, so. Uh, moving on to Naramon, this is um, the community's personal favorite, because this one is extremely overpowered. Uh, you get your, you know... Seeing melee abilities here like Shadow Step. Uh, Mind Spike grants 5 seconds of invisibility when inflicting critical damage with a melee weapon for the duration of. That's insane. Anytime you get a crit with a melee weapon, you're gonna go invisibly. Try to tell me that that isn't overpowered, right? It's kinda mental. So all you have to do is activate Mind Spike and then just bring out your Adorax with your Blood Rush body count, crit on every single hit. And you're going to be invisible for the rest of the mission, right? I should actually start investing into this because that is an insane, an absolutely insane uh, focus ability to have right there. Obviously, you have to, like, you know, get mind spec mastery. So, what we just go down and also get strategic execution. So, it grants 10% uh, increased affinity from killing enemies with melee weapons for the duration of the mission. That's also a nice thing to have there. Um, reading for other ones, we have Mind Spike grants 50%, increased critical chance with melee weapons for the duration of missions. You know, this is just an insane skill tree in general. So, you know, there's more than one that you might want to spec into here. Um, Mind Spike opens up enemies to finishers and increases finisher damage taken by 15%. That one's not too worth it, Tactical Strike. Mind Spike grants allies 10% increased critical chance and melee weapons, uh, or with melee weapons for 20% or 20 seconds. That's not too worth it either. Mind Spike grants allies invisibility for 5 seconds, not too worth it. Mind Spike has 25% chance to disarm enemies, not too worth it. Reduces the distance traveled by Mind Spike by 10 meters, but increases the size to 25 degrees, not too worth it. And then Mind Spike grants free charges of trauma. Melee attacks consume a charge of trauma to inflict critical damage. Players will, will lose 30 health per second while they have trauma charges active. So that again is not too worth it so you can see like you only really get like you know free here so mind spike mastery strategic execution shadow step and then you know maybe deadly intent if you really want it right it's there's no real downside to having it apart from that increased uh the increased cooldown on your mind spike right so that is the Naramon tree and that's insane for warframes like excalibur or valkyr that you know you might be modding for crit with their um their exalted weapons i guess so, you know, it's it's really insane, uh, this tree in general. So this is why, you know, it's the personal favorite of most people. Moving on to Vazrin over here. This is like uh, your healing one, which you can use to heal people and instantly revive people. This would be like the third most pick. So you have, you know, your Naraman, then you have your Xenaric, and then you have your Vazrin, And then the last two are kind of just tied with one another for being equally kind of bad. Uh, so Mending Tides, at least five waves of restorative energy over 10 seconds. Each granting 250 health uh, to allies within 10 meters, which is pretty good, right? So this is all just about your healing. So that's really all I really get here. Uh, and then you move on to your um, reviving one, which I can't remember for the life of me which one it is because I don't use this. So 
Okay, Mending Tides. Mending Tides grants the ability to revive fallen allies instantly up to one times for the duration of the mission. So the more you spec into this, then the more instant revives you have. So it's just like you go up, you press X, and then that's it. You know, everything else in the skill tree is kind of kind of meh. Um, you know, you have increased affinity range. You have Mending Tides mirrors 2.5% damage. It's kind of like it's kind of like a Trinity. Um, focus tree right here so you get a lot of uh like abilities that trinity would have like with link and stuff but uh, so instantly revive uh you know mending ties will instantly revive fallen allies but has a 95 percent chance to inflict them with viral and magnetic status for two times duration like what's the point in even getting that you know unless they were like planning on like expanding the tree out and there's going to be something insanely good after polluted waters there would be no reason ever to choose that one because like why would you just want to like you know, inflict viral or magnetic status chance on them for like, times duration. It's like, what? Hello. Uh, so, you know, you want to get Mending Tides and then get your new moon, which will allow you to revive them and stuff like that there. So this is just a, a reviving skill tree and a healing skill tree. And that's really all there is. So obviously you want to get your Mending Tides Mastery. So you want to get new moon, Mending Tides and Mending Tides Mastery. And then that's really it. Uh, you have your Mending Tides grants a shell of protective energy, and a man Mending Tides also restores uh, shields. I mean, Trinity can give you over shields in no time. Uh, Mending Tides grants Afflicted Allies a protection ward for 5 seconds. Meh. Mending Tides grants an aura for 5 seconds that stuns enemies that pass through it, which is also meh. You know, so, that's really all there is with Vazarin. And the last two, Madurai and uh, Unurai, I think that's what that's called. Now, let's take a look at these. So, we have Basilic Flare. Uh, this is just like your focus ability. We have Stone Shape, 5% bonus armor, it's kind of meh. 20% uh, ch chance to petrify enemies, like kind of like Necros' Terrify. We have uh, attacks with melee weapons reduced to armor for 5%, which is too low of a value. We have reduced the cooldown of Basilic Flare, which is your mastery. We have enemies uh, petrified by Basilic Flare, continue to take 200 damage per second, which, you know, it's not that big of a deal. You could probably dish that out of your Soma. Uh, ends with an eruption of flames blanketing a 4 meter radius. It's just a big massive beam. This is meant to be like a damage dealer one. Then we have reducing the spread of the uh, of your main focus ability as well because it's like a laser that sort of spreads out. So that one isn't too worth it. And then we move on to Madurai over here, which is your Phoenix Gay, uh, Phoenix Gaze, 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 whatever. Unleash a 20 meter destructive beam that inflicts a thousand damage, or is it 10 thousand damage per second uh, for 10 seconds to any target in its path, which is pretty good. That's a pretty good amount of damage, but you know, is it really worth investing all the focus in? Uh -uh. Okay, so uh, Phoenix Gears uh, splits into three beams, cool, uh, dealing 15% damage. Fiery Trila remains in the path of Phoenix Gears, which is basically the same as the one that we literally just talked about in your Nurai, or whatever it's called. A forceful blast strikes the target of the Phoenix Gears, uh, igniting or inflicting damage to enemies within years. Uh, targets struck by Phoenix Gears have 5% chance to become ignited. A distance of Phoenix Gears is reduced to 10 meters, but movement speed is increased by 10. Uh, Phoenix Gears ends with an explosive blast. So a lot of these are very, very not worth it, right? You know, it's just kind of like small percentage increases to your main focus ability. And unless like that was being implemented and a lot of those were being implemented for future development uh, into like a broader skill tree then uh, you know i don't necessarily see the point in you modding into them it wouldn't hurt to have a shit ton of focus for every single skill tree saved up so you can equip like more than one uh lens to like all of your equipment so you can have like a xenarch in your warframe a naramon on your primary a vazrin on your secondary so on and so forth so you can earn like xp for all of them uh you know in every mission that you obviously you can only only earn like 100k a day so you know depending on how much you play uh will determine how much you get stuff like that there but you know it's a system which is currently under development and it's going to be changed in the future and i'm just making this video to basically show you guys like why you should care about it because it's going to be a feature that you know if you have the resources sitting there ready to spend uh, we're already spent for whenever the new system comes out or whenever it gets reworked or revamped, which is relatively soon as far as I know. Um, then, yeah, I mean, you know, you're going to be pretty good whenever it comes to these focus uh, skills and having really overpowered and cool things. Because 
obviously things like Xenric and Narmon Shadow Step. You know, Xenric's Energy Overflow, Narmon Shadow Step, those aren't going to stay for long, right? So you might as well take advantage of those while they're there. So, I mean, if you want to, just go ahead and, you know, get those as soon as possible. But uh, the rest of your focus, I would say save it up. Uh, make sure you have it just sitting in your inventory. And then whenever it comes to the new system comes out, go ahead and spend it on anything uh, that seems appealing to you. So they are probably, my best bet is reworking Madurai and Yunaru. I, I, for the love of God, I will not be able to pronounce that. <laughs> I don't know why, but um, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, but it's whatever. They will probably end up changing a lot of the skills in there because they're very lackluster, and then they'll probably end up developing uh, more of Narmon, Xenric, and Vazarin, same for Madurai and Yunari. So, you know, that's my guess for what they're doing, but they might be completely revamping it too. So it uh, it's hopefully coming, uh, and there's also going to be like a lot more emphasis on like just playing as... Uh, the operator as well which is also a thing that you get after the war of quests so you know uh that's a thing because we're going to be able to play as them and deal more damage as them with these weight things and like these little uh gem things that we can fit into the weight so we just have to see how it sort of all plays out so my recommendations to you guys just go ahead farm a buttload of focus get the stuff in xenarch and get the stuff in narmon and then leave it at that you can possibly spec in the vazarin as well if you're going to be doing a lot of raids or if you're going to be doing a whole lot of high level content and you fear that you know your teammates may be very very poopy um and you want to revive them a lot but uh personally if it were me just go with xenarch and narmon your teammates can revive themselves four times five times and if they're dying five times within a mission they're probably too on their level to be in that mission anyway, so personally, I don't really understand why you'd ever go for uh, Vazarin, in my opinion. But um, that's basically it. So anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead, hit that like button below. And if you want to see more Warframe content from me, hit subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.